the partnership between Elyria Police and Elyria City Schools goes back before I was hired. Uh, we had uh, DARE officers in the school then, uh, and that increased in presence while I was new on the department. Uh, when I was in the detective bureau myself and now Captain Constantino, uh, part of our duties um, being in the youth bureau was to go to the schools and we would try to go daily uh, to the various schools to, to meet the, the staff and more importantly the kids. Uh, we felt that the more the kids saw us, the more comfortable they were around us uh, and that would help in multiple areas. Uh, first, they would feel comfortable coming to us if there was a, a problem either at school or at home uh, and we could help fix whatever that problem was. And secondly, if uh, there was a, something going to happen that maybe the police needed to know about, we could get an unofficial uh, report from some, one of the kids that it was going to happen and we could try to avoid anybody getting hurt with whatever that event was. Uh, so we did that for a while. Uh, Chris and I both promoted up through the department, but the department and the uh, schools have, have always maintained uh, a great working relationship uh, through, you know, I remember uh, Superintendent Paul Rigda, uh, I'm trying to think of her name right now, uh, Harper, Jean Harper. Um, I remember meeting with her when I was, I was probably just a lieutenant then, um, about the schools and how we were going to do it. And then, of, of course, we had uh, um, Tom Jama and now Ann Schloss. And we've never, we haven't lost that relationship in going through all those. If anything, we've increased it throughout the years and improved it. Uh, guys, our officers go through the schools um, as part of their duties when, when they're not on calls. Um, and we want the, the kids to, to feel comfortable seeing the police and knowing the police. We want the officers to know the staff, the layout of the building. Uh, in case they, there's an emergency they have to respond to. They'll know who a staff member is and who isn't. Uh, and they'll know what part of the building, if they say the school cafeteria, well, that's every school's not laid out the same. So they'll know where that is uh, and how to get there. Uh, and again, with the uh, children and the comfortable relationship that these officers uh, develop and maintain with the, the uh, students, uh, it can only benefit down the road. The, the relationship that the police department has with the schools now with the um, program with the officers in the schools, uh, it started out where we would have a, a school resource officer who would be one officer, he'd be in the high school, and it would be the same guy every day, that was his assignment. Uh, and he would develop a good working relationship with the, the staff. He would get to know the kids uh, and try to develop relationships there and he would know the layout of the school. The problem with that idea, while it, it's, it works out really well in most areas, is it's one officer that knows that. And if something happens and that officer's not around, now you don't have anybody who knows the staff, who knows the kids very well, and who knows the layout of the building that well. The program we have now is it is I think up to eight officers that work at um, work the schools and they do one day a week and they rotate who they are. So now we'll have eight officers who know the staff and eight officers who know the kids and the layout of the school in depth. Uh, we work with the schools on a, our training basis, uh, especially during the summer where we do training in the schools. So all the officers will have an idea uh, we just want to make sure that it's fresh, that they, they're really up on it. Um, and they know the little nooks and crannies and the supply closets here and where this leads that you may not get in a, when you do a training in there. Um, so you're multiplying it by as many as eight by doing it the way we're doing it now. Uh, and now with our relationship expanding to include Eastern Heights and next year, the new Northwood complex, uh, it'll be 16. Uh, roughly, that know these schools and the students and the staff in three different schools in the district uh, instead of, you know, one. So it, it does greatly increase the influence the officers have on the kids. It increases their knowledge. 
uh, of not only the buildings, but of the kids and their family situation and uh, the staff and how they're doing in, in the school. Uh, so there, there's really no end to the knowledge that we gain by being in the schools the way we are. Again, the way we, we do it now, the, the officers will work their day off in the schools. And then they come to work their shift, whichever shift it is, for five days a week. Uh, and they'll run into children or staff members while they're doing their regular duties. And they've already developed a relationship with uh, either the students and or the staff. So it makes their job easier and you don't have, when you walk up to a situation, you see somebody you recognize, uh, let's say you're the student or the staff member and the policeman walks up and you already know them. You're not as concerned about why they're there and are they gonna hear what you're saying. You already establish a relationship with them. So you feel more trust, uh, more comfortable in dealing with them. Uh, one of the issues that we run into a lot, uh, our road officers do, is when they deal with children, the children are afraid of the police. Uh, they're, they get that through multiple things. Sometimes, you know, parents will try to get their children when they're young to, to behave correctly, will tell them, if, if you don't act right, I'm going to call the police or I'm going to have that policeman come over and arrest you. They're just trying to get the child to act properly, but it sets a seed in that child's mind that the police are bad that I don't want to be around the police. Um, this program helps us work one and one on one with these kids in many situations to where they, they break down that barrier and it's they're no longer afraid to come to us if something's going on somewhere. Uh, if they heard of something that we need to know about, they're more likely to talk to us. Uh, and if they've got a, an unfortunate situation, either at home or their friend's home, that they want to, to, to say something to, it, it really breaks down that barrier and, and they'll be more comfortable talking to the officer. Uh, building new schools, uh, I, I think, is just awesome for the city. Uh, I'll, I'll use the high school, for example. When we were going through the process, I should say you guys were going through the process of building the high school, one of the comments I kept hearing from certain members of the public was, kids are just going to tear it up. I don't know why we're putting this money in. Well, I think you moved into that school in 09. 10 years ago, that school is in pristine condition. Those kids take care of that school. Uh, it, it fits under the broken windows theory. If something looks broken and dilapidated, they'll treat it as such. That's just human nature. Uh, so the, the students treat the building better. Uh, it is a fantastic learning environment. Uh, there's, there's no issue with, I mean, in August and June, how, how is it to sit in those buildings when it's hot out? It's not a good learning environment. The human body is just gonna make you wanna sleep. Uh, in the high school, that, that is not an issue. In the new, these new schools, they're all gonna be new. So everywhere that these kids go, they're gonna be in a great learning environment, uh, which is, I don't think you can, you can put a, a number on how well, how much that's gonna help them in the, in the learning process. It's gonna be fantastic for them. Safety-wise, they're being built with the, the latest safety standards in place. In, in 1900s, early 1900s, there were no safety standards. They didn't think about that when they were building schools. Well, we have to now. You have to be aware of that, and the schools are being built as safe as possible with all the, them safety standards in mind. So they're going from some very, very old schools that were not designed uh, correctly for what schools should be for a learning environment, and uh, they weren't designed for safety to some schools, all the schools, that are going to be designed that way. Uh, I, I just think that's a huge win for the city. I think it's a huge win for the schools. And biggest of all, it's a, it's a big win for the students.